We're here with uh, Richland Burnett Ryan at the uh, Yvonne Scarlett Golden Educational Cultural Center in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, she has a show up uh, entitled ENCODE and uh, we're just going to interview her and get her feel about art and her perspective on what she does and who she is and so forth. All right. Um, well, I'm going to start with the, the basic question that everyone asks, um, why art? Oh, why art? Um, I guess it was uh, in me from a young age. Uh, most African people, or sun people, don't don't see art as just its aesthetic aesthetic value. We see art as functional. It usually, when you look at our art, most of the the art or functional piece of our society. So it started as a young at a young age for me. Um, uh, moving from the city, uh, Georgetown, to Plaisance in Guyana, South America, I did not have my toys with me, so I didn't have a doll, and I found a discarded doll head, and I cleaned it up and, and figured out a way that I could create a doll for myself, and I found a Johnson Baby's powder uh, dis uh, container, placed the doll head on that and created arms and legs with nails. And then I proceeded to create clothing for the doll. When my aunt saw that, she was amazed that at that age I was creating not only the doll itself, but also the clothing that went along with it. And um, I guess that was the, the first inkling that I had some artistic abilities at that age. You know, it's it's unique. Well, it actually isn't unique to uh, to uh, many things. Uh, uh, children generally have the greatest imagination, and uh, that lends to the, the need to create. Um, what's your art background? My art background, um, starting at a young age, um, one of my aunts saw that I was creating these small little vignettes of life with. Um, uh, composition notebook covers. I would rip the pages out, took the notebook covers, and created uh, little rooms. And then I proceeded to put wallpaper, the, the, the tables, the chairs, the stoves, everything in the room, as well as the people. And she saw that as a piece of art, and she exhibited it um, in a show um, at Penn State University, where she was a professor. And that was my first um, experience at, with um, having my art exhibit. And I think that was at probably the age of maybe 11. Um, then I went on to study, uh, went to the um, fashion industry. I thought I wanted, to, I wanted to be a fashion designer, but they did not have the academics that I wanted in that school. So I, I went back and uh, transferred to doing medical science, which is more academic. <laughs> graduated and went on to study graphic design at um, Rochester Institute of Technology and uh, found that I needed to be in the city so I transferred down back to the city and uh, to the School of Visual Arts where I continued studying. After that I uh, went on to uh, a, uh, as an art design, a graphic artist, and then was promoted to art director for a um, financial publication um, on down by Wall Street. Um, the the name of the publication I was art director was um, uh, in in Investment Dealers Digest, um, which had a huge um, history behind it. And then after 9/11, my husband retired. We moved down to Florida continue raising our children and then decided uh, to pursue his career as an artist. I managed him for quite a while, uh, doing graphics and everything else around that as well. And then uh, decided to take on art as a full-time uh, uh, career and this is where I am today.
So, uh, how do you work? Um, I basically start out uh, with a concept, um, with a, a design in mind. Uh, also, I have steps of where I'm going to take the piece conceptually. And then I also leave room for some uh, creative flow to happen, happenstance. And uh, usually I'm happy with where the work goes and sometimes I'm not so happy. So there's always that room for creative uh, adventure in my pieces. And, and uh, I know there's so, many, so much colors here, but uh, what's your medium and why do you use that medium? Okay, my medium is usually mixed. I, I, I gravitated to acrylics because I have uh, uh, low tolerance for toxic mediums uh, due to my young age of using rubber cement. So I have a, a, a very uh, low tolerance for toxic mediums. So I started using acrylics and then I wanted vibrant colors and I experimented and found tissue as a really good means of getting that vibrant uh, flowing of colors. And so usually it's a mixed medium I, I'm using in my pieces. And uh, that's basically it. Okay, so, so well, with all the color that I see, um, one question that I do have, and most people will have, is your genre. Which, what genre do you think you fit into? I feel I fit into more of a expressionistic because my colors are expressionistic, not in the moody sense, but in the sense that it's what I feel, and that's my expression of adding such vibrant colors into my pieces. They're not. Sometimes the pieces are sad but I'm still bringing in that vibrant color because I feel I want people to transform people from that sad place into the hopeful space of perhaps there is a solution to this particular problem that I'm speaking to. Okay, well, does your work require a certain level of inspiration? Uh, yes, it does. Um, all artwork acquires a certain level of inspiration. And I, I don't know if you're talking about inspiration from the art, artist's view or inspiration from the viewers. Um, and I try to put that into my work as by communing, communicating the situation as well as giving hope towards the solution. Well, that's funny you, you said that because I, I, I see uh, multiple themes. Uh, what themes do you pursue? Uh, some of it. Uh, I do have some uh, landscape uh, floral pieces. I do have some uh, 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 social pieces. A lot of the pieces in, in this show are social, like the piece behind me which is about Angela Davis, that she's one of my heroes. <laughs> See, you're doing live, so these are things that happen when you, you interview live. So, so the piece behind me is about Angela Davis, and um, she's one of my heroes. And a lot of pieces around the gallery in this show, in particular, um, represents a lot of the, the people I admire. All right. Uh, now, what would be the best, what was the best uh, advice you've been given as an artist? <laughs> what is the best advice? I would say probably the advice I give to most artists that I come across with by uh, curating is know who you are and whatever you create, make sure you're solid in, in what you're trying to communicate. Um, it may not be in the form, but it's what you're communicating and how you're reaching people with your with your uh, particular medium um, of art. Um, just know who you are and be pr and be solid in that because most of the time people know when you're fudging it. So if you are strongly standing behind the work you're doing, I think it'll speak for itself. Um, now, of course, uh, we're going to culminate with this one question, and it's dealing with you and your art. Uh, what's the relationship between the artist and his or her art? Uh, the relationship. I would say it's, uh, it's a child, it's a spouse, 
it's a friend. <laughs> I see it as a, a as a integral part of the artist's existence. If I wasn't able to create, I think that's a huge part of me that would actually be um, undeveloped. That is an integral part of who I am creating. And most people who are creative, it's part of their existence. So um, I see it as food, water, air, whatever it is that helps us to grow and, and, and nurture our souls.